And um, yeah, uh, without further ado, I'll pass it to Greg, and um, he can introduce himself, and also for all of you to have a chance to do so. Thanks. Thanks, Carol. So uh, I think what we're going to do, we're going to pass this around. Sorry, Mark. We're going to pass this around so everyone can introduce themselves real quick. I would be interested to know which parts of the schedule you're here for, or whether just the whole thing, uh, which is fine too. Uh, and I'm also one of the community architects, along with Carol and Walter. Uh, so you know, this is kind of our thing where we like want to chat with you all and find out what's interesting and figure out how we push things forward. Right, that's what we do. So, yes, my name is Greg. I am also known as Ben Gilvin. Uh, so there you go. That's how you pronounce it. I know everyone wants to know. And uh, I have been doing this a while. So I'm going to shut up because you, I'm just boring. So I'll be, I'll, you're going to hear from me again in a few minutes because uh, I've got the first session. And I am going to pass this on to the first person in the audience. Uh, here we go. I use as a work, for personal stuff. And uh, yeah, I'm just here to check the event out. First time we did something like this. Cool. Yeah, that was earlier. Um, what he said was, my name is Frank. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> Hi, my name is Don. Everyone um, I'm. Love it, love it. They can't hear you right there. I need more coffee. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Didn't get a great night's sleep. My name's Don. Um, I'm one of the Ansible community um, team members, along with Greg and Carol. And I'm uh, really excited to see everyone. I'm looking forward to all the great talks and good stuff coming today. Hey, folks. I'm Gundalo. I used to be on the community engineering team, and I am now the engineering manager for AWS Power Controller. Um, particularly looking forward to the talks around the dev tools and the docs and stuff uh, later on. Thanks. Good morning, good morning. Uh, my name is Walter Bentley. Um, I have the privilege of working with uh, and Darrow. Um, I am on Matrix as W Bentley 15 and I am the community strategy director and I work at Red Hat. So I am here to listen and learn and absorb and communicate back to the evening. Uh, hello, I'm David. Um, I, uh, I am often called the R guy, but also will hire us to do other things. Uh, um, this is my first community management camp, and it's been a whole lot of fun. Uh, so I'm here to um, learn some more useful things and contribute in uh, any which way. Hi, my name is Ricky. Um, I joined us about uh, six years ago, then you know I shuffled around a bit, and I'm just back like four months ago. I'm part of the presentation team, and you know I'm super happy to be here doing as well things. My first company management camp. I'll be happy to meet you all. Hello, my name is Simone. I'm from Georgia. Jan is the European Research and Education Network. We use Ansible to speed up virtual infrastructure as well as uh, to configure physical routers. So happy to, to, to be here. Thank you. 
point yet because I mostly hear you. Oh. Uh. No, we, from the live stream it said that this microphone's been okay. Okay, I'm hearing mostly. <laughs> okay, uh, my name is Sanjay. Um, I work for Exa. Uh, we're actually developing Ansible collections and also try to contribute to Ansible. And today we are here to present you also our tool that will help you also with Ansible upgrades and stuff like this. So we're excited to share our thoughts, to see you in person, and it's also my first company management camp. So I look forward to what's coming. <coughs> Hello, I'm Nate. I'm also from the Club Sleepout and I will be also presenting uh, a spotter tool with Sanjay. Uh, nice to meet everybody. Yeah, we need to My name is Mark. I work oh, for Muscle IDC. Yeah, I'm just working on the Ansible user. So I'm trying to learn more about the community and maybe how to get an open Hi, my name is uh, Daniel. I'm from um, Germany working for Betadots. I'm an um, IT automation consultant, so I'm doing trainings and helping. Um, our customers to build their um, infrastructure using Ansible. And yeah, uh, you also find me at the metrics, mostly in the user help uh, section. Louder. Okay, that sound okay, Mark? Am I good? <coughs> Am I, all right? I have the YouTube delay before. <laughs> no, 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 fair enough. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm um, sure the room will tell us. Do you have a mic off? We probably should switch to the mic off for now. Yeah, I don't know how. <laughs> um, <coughs> could I have my water bottle, Karen? Um, so a little bit about how we're going to run today. Uh, we've got a schedule. Thank you very much. Uh, but it's very much a case of let's talk, right? This, it's a small group. It's going to be a case of just figuring out what's interesting to us. I hope more people will join us in a bit because I know there's definitely other people I've spoken to who are keen to be a part. Maybe they're just still sleeping. I wouldn't blame them. This is very much, it's, uh, certainly for, as a speaker for, for myself, I'm very happy to be interrupted. So I'm going to be going through some, some more detail of what I talked about on Monday, how I think this might work, what I think we need to achieve and why. Um, but this is an open discussion. I don't claim to be right. I just state what I see and what I think we should do about it. Right? Um, so, and I, I think that will be true for a lot of people. We're just interested in, in getting feedback and playing around and seeing what we can fix. Mm. Now we are a couple of minutes ahead of schedule, so does anyone have anything they think we should talk about that is not on today's schedule? That goes to the room as well when they catch up. Excellent, got it all covered. <laughs> I'll wait for the room to catch up as well. Though. Um, so I'm going to be talking in two parts again. So uh, Monday I presented, I'm going to quickly go, I know you all saw it, but very quickly for the stream, I'm going to go through the metrics again from Monday because it didn't get captured by the stream. <laughs> and we will fix that recording later, but just because I know some people were super um, bummed not to get the, to see those graphs, I'm going to really quickly go over them again. So I apologize to bore the people who've already seen it, but just so that we all know where we're starting from. And then I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about what I think might happen, how I think it can happen. And this is none of this is set in stone. None of this is set in stone. Good morning, Evgeny. <laughs> Yeah, that was fine. <laughs> you haven't missed anything, sorry. <laughs> so, I think it's half past, close enough. Anyone mind if I start? Good. Yeah, you'd rather see the slides, trust me. <laughs> 
and I don't consider myself to be particularly photogenic. Mm. Also, I'm so glad to have Mark here looking after us for AV because my voice is going and I don't think I can project to the back of the room very well. Today. Can you hear me at the back, Brian? Yeah, we okay? We good? Because the way we've got this set up, we don't get the room audio, right? So now I have to, <laughs> have to make sure I get everybody. Okay. So on Monday, I talked through where I think we got, where we think we've come up to in the last couple of years, what I think is going to be necessary and why, and then I outlined, outlined what I think the plan should be. Um, and I'm hoping that we can get agreement on this in the community. Um, so very quickly for the people who missed it on Monday, you okay? We good? Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> all right, I'll come over here. That's all right. I'll just move the laptop. It's fine. There we go. Okay. So I have to be careful because I've not mirrored my displays. I have something else here. Um, so I'm not going to go through all this again. And I'm not going to go through the agenda again. But these are the graphs that I showed on Monday. So these are the metrics for users. So the idea being that it's hard to measure users in open source because they don't have to tell us that they're using it. Um, but we can get some signals if we ignore kind of the y-axis a little bit. We don't care too much whether it's 10 or 20 or 50 or whatever. But we do care about the trend, right? And you can see that none of these, uh, all of these trends should be up and to the right if we're doing OK because you've got docs. You've got com uh, unique visitors to the docs, comments on Reddit, questions on Stack Overflow, and posts to the mailing list. None of these things are going in a particularly great direction, although the mailing list one does not surprise me. So, and, and you can see the scale. Uh, you probably can't see the scales here, but just, just, just for the illustration, 2019, 2014, 2014, 2020. So the shortest time scale on that is the docs, which is a two-year period. Everything else is even longer. These are not new trends, right? If you look at GitHub as well, oh, sorry, I've gone too far. There we go. If you look at GitHub, these are my definitions around active contributors, which I've talked through before. People who've seen me at previous contributor summits will know how that works. Um, but my point is it's not a trivial number where you just open one issue and never get seen again and you get counted, right? It doesn't work like that. Again, with the exception of DevTools, which is doing stupidly well at looking after its community. I don't know. I, I have theories as to why this is. <laughs> um, but everything else is decreasing. Right? And, and if you look at chat, no, I mean, obviously, given that Matrix was my idea, I'm very happy with that top right graph, which is the trend in the number of Matrix users per day. Um, the one on the left is the number of IRC users per day over the last year. Um, but if you add them together, it's not enough to count. The like, matrix doesn't cancel out the drop in IRC. Right? We're still losing people over time. Um, I hope that will change. Oh, battery's dying already. Um, this is not good. None of these things are good. We've, I've just shown you like nine, ten graphs. Only one of them has a trend that we could be happy about. Um, and so on Monday, I presented the idea that this is not good and we should do something about it. So that's for the benefit of the people who didn't see the slides on Monday. So what I suggested was a two-part plan. And the first was that we should have a website that actually belongs to the community. And the second is that we should do something about the fragmentation in Ansible, because it's huge. Right? It's 470 repos, 32 chat rooms, seven mailing lists, four GitHub discussion boards, no websites. Uh, <laughs> there's just so much. right? Where do you even start? And I think a lot of the problems, the structural problems that we see come from that. So I'm not going to spend too much time talking about the website. I mean, the room, I asked for a show of hands in the room on Monday. And it was pretty clear that most people thought this was a good idea. Um, I don't, don't think it was particularly controversial. Now, we have to decide how we're going to do that. And we have to decide a time frame over it. I would like to move fairly quickly, because these trends aren't going away, and they're not going to get better. Uh, but, you know, I mean, I've seen open source move very, very fast. I'm not saying we need to do it next week, right? <laughs> this is this, this, not that fast. But I would like to see it done in the first half of this year, if we can, because um, that would be very, very nice. Now, to do that, I don't have slides for this bit, by the way. I'm going to go back to the, I'll go back here just so we've got some to look at, right? There we go. <laughs> um, we've got to name it, and we've got to work out how to transition to it, right? Now, I'm going to open this up. I'm going to take, take the first uh, next five minutes of my time. And just ask for people's thoughts, names, ideas, how do we do the transition? What do we think? David, I knew you'd be in first. Go. Uh, 
No. Uh, no, no wordplay on Ansible, please. Like we have too many of those. No, no, I agree. I think it needs to be simple. So, so for the for the for the audio, because we didn't have the second mic, David's saying no, no puns, please. Um, and I, I think I agree. Uh, I think it needs to be clear, simple, separated. Right. I think part of the problem we have is that the word Ansible is overloaded. It means four things, five things at least. <laughs> I can think of the project, the language, the Red Hat product. Uh, the package. <laughs> there's, there's at least one more. What am I missing? The X company. The X company yeah. The CLI, tool. the CLI tool. Yeah. So I, I don't want to steal the show here, but. <laughs> but you have opinions, right? So there is a community <laughs> TLD. Yep. And Ansible, the community is free right now. Okay, so that's an option. Yeah, so I was going to ask you, Ansible or okay, I'm assuming because I know it's taken. I haven't looked. I mean, until we start thinking about what names we want, there's no point even like we we got to get some idea of what that what what I need what we need to decide. I think is what is the wording first, and we can figure out what the name what what domain name goes around that. I mean, it's reasonably good, but I want to know what the string is going to be that we put everywhere, right? Because we have got and one of the things that came up on Monday. We did a show of hands on how we thought the mission felt right now, and that was pretty weak response, actually weaker than I expected. And so we need to talk about that as well. And um, I don't know that that's for here. I think that's a, a much wider discussion. But once we've got that right, that needs to go everywhere as well. Because if you look at PyPy, if you look at Ansible, Ansible on GitHub, if you look at the current product website, they all say different things about what Ansible is. Similar things, yes, but different things. And I'd like to sort that out as part of this, right? We need this, right? We need to figure out the name, the string, and the mission statement, and that goes everywhere, right? Because that's important. That's just that's marketing 101, right? <laughs> so um, I, I want to get that string right. I don't know if it's going to be Ansible Project, Ansible Community, some other thing. Someone suggested Vox Ansible to me, and I laughed a lot um, because it's a play on the Vox Populi, if, you, if you're familiar with it. <laughs> I'm not. I, I'm not taking that one seriously. It's fine. Um, I did check with Evard whether he'd kill me for doing that, but um, no, we're not doing that. So, yes, there needs to be some discussion on that. Um, does anyone have any? I mean, the, the two front runners are obviously Ansible Community, Ansible Project. I don't think it makes sense to use a completely different name. We don't need to completely rename ourselves. That's a terrible idea. Gundogan. So, Tom um, Tremble, so Mark, he says he really likes the idea of Ansible Community, even if it's only redirects. Right. So which is good. And then from my point of view, Ansible Projects, I think it's already somewhat overloaded, I think, in new. Yeah, Ansible Projects overloaded. Yeah, I tell, uh, so for, for the audio, um, yeah, Ansible Project is. I is the room quite oh, they, they, they got the room okay? Okay, good. So, yeah, I, I would agree. I wanted to throw it out there to see what other people thought. I don't want to bias this too much, right? Um, I don't get. It's 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 the advantage. It's the speaker's advantage of having the mic, right? If I if I say things first, people will just like nod. <laughs> so, um, but I I think you're probably right. How, how do we want to come up with the name? I think, I think this is a discussion. So, what I'm going to do in the next week is I'm going to write all of this up. So that uh, not exactly a trip report, but I'm going to do a written version of my talk from Monday, and I'll probably do a second one specific to the second half of this uh, talk, which we'll come to in a minute. And then we'll circulate that, right, and get people's opinions. Uh, and then, so, so this is the problem, right? You, you've, you've, you've put your finger right on it, Gondolo. Where, where are we going to have that conversation is part of the problem right now. Uh, so I think the obvious place to do this, given the infrastructure we have today, is community topics. Um, that will be the place. But we need to introduce it. We need to make sure everyone's like got the context and so on. So I'll do the writing. Just like I did with Matrix like 18 months ago, I'll do the writing, I'll put together what we talked about here, and then we'll put that up on community topics and we'll start the discussion there. So if anybody who is not in the room, hi stream, um, wants, has a strong opinions and they're watching this later, after you know, the people who are live can obviously join in, um, then that's the place to watch. GitHub.com uh, forward slash Ansible dash community forward slash community dash topics. That's where a lot of the community topics get discussed at the moment. That is, I think, the sensible place to put this. Does anyone disagree with that? Does that seem like a sensible idea? I'm getting a lot of nodding. OK, good, excellent. Um, so that's, that's going to be the way, to, way forward. And I think it's the only way forward. Right? We have to agree as a community what is the way forward on all this stuff. All I can do is say, here's what I see, and here's what I think we do. But I don't get to decide. right? So we have to have that debate somewhere. OK, so it seems like. From the room, at least, Ansible community as a string is the front runner. Um, and I'm very open to other ideas, things we haven't thought of. I think the word Ansible needs to be in there. 
I agree with the no puns. We have too many of those. And the problem with the puns is they only work in one language. Right? We're too big for that now. It worked fine for a while, but it's not very inclusive. Right? <laughs> so, um, yeah, someone was pointing out all the bull puns don't work in like any other language the other night, and I was like, yeah, fair point. Okay, so, any more comments on websites before I move on? Excellent. That's, I, I mean, it's fairly non-controversial. The, the, the process I foresee is that we agree on a, on a name, a string, we go see what we can register, and then we as the community team will register that, and then we will put together a working group, right? So there'll be a place to chat about it, we'll have a, a repo, we're probably looking at some kind of static site generator, I don't know which one, um, there's loads these days. Uh, but we can talk about it, right? We'll put a working group together and we'll figure out what technology is going to run it, roughly what it's going to look like. I'll make sure the right people internally are involved. And then we can push it forward as a community, right? That, that, that seems fairly straightforward. Let's move on to the slightly more controversial one, <laughs> which is forums. Now, I know not everybody loves forums, but I do, because I have seen how they can work. Um, I, have seen, I have seen many examples of bad ones, yes, I agree, but done right, they can be incredibly powerful because they can move a lot of your workflow into the right places. And what I want to try and go through is why I think this is a good idea from a number of different angles, which I didn't have time to go into on Monday at all. All I could do is say, hey, let's do this, and then leave. Right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch this over um, to the other monitor. Um, this is... so. Internally, I have set up a test instance of Discourse, which is not public at the moment because we wanted to just play with it and see like, things. But one thing I did uh, three months ago was to take a Google Doc, which is what Red Hat uses internally, and just write everything that I could think of about asynchronous communication into one document. And then we edited it over time as a team. Last week, and this is just one of the tiny things I love about Discourse, I took that entire document, Control A, Control V, Control C into a Discourse post, and it made perfect markdown out of it. Like the images, the links, the tables, everything. So I'm going to show you that doc and just walk through it, I think, because rather than write even more slides, this seems like a better idea. So let me see if I can make this go over there. Uh, nope. <laughs> oh, that's because I'm on the wrong monitor. Uh, there it is, and then we'll make. So bear in mind, this is kind of sort of private. I'm not going to show any other topics just now. You can see we've been playing around with some different categories and things. I don't mind those being on the stream. There's nothing there that's particularly sensitive. Um, and this is obviously very small text. I'm not expecting you to read it. What I am going to do is mirror my displays, I think, so I can read it here. Um, so let me just fix that. <laughs> uh, there we go. Right. So. This is, this is the thing that I went through. I, I kind of want you to see that this just works, right? I literally cut and pasted this out of a Google Doc. I was, I was astonished. Actually, let's make that a bit bigger. There we go. And I will hide the, the sidebar. And um, that looks pretty decent now, doesn't it? Is that readable? OK, good. So here's the problem, right? This, is, this I already pitched on Monday. Um, you know, that we're, we're large enough. We're a community of communities. We're a neighborhood. We're a, a big project. Whatever word you want to use, we're big. And we're hurting discussion. That was, that was what I said on Monday. This is the point I made. If you want to be a part of Ansible, where do you start? Where could you start? You could start on the community page. You could start on the documentation. You could start the community documentation has uh, some con contributor path stuff we were doing. You could start at Ansible um, on GitHub in a number of places. Right? There's just so much here. It's all very fragmented. Um, some evidence. I showed some graphs already. Here's some different graphs. This is the mailing list again. You've seen this one. Um, that's uh, That's the posts per month. This one is the users per month. Um, you can make a s definition of an active user, in which case the peak shifts slightly, but even then it doesn't really change anything. Uh, you can do cohorts, which aren't very interesting. This was an interesting one. This was me plotting Stack Overflow versus the mailing list, and I think this kind of shows quite nicely like where all the users went. <laughs> because we weren't meeting their needs, right? Mailing lists are not what people want today. And I think this graph illustrates very clearly that mailing lists are not what people want today. Uh, so that's fine. I don't need to. Uh, this is like uh, this is GitHub Discussions. So some some repos have moved over to GitHub Discussions. Uh, mostly things under DevTools. Uh, beyond DevTools, once you get down here, it's uh, like even within uh, a few a few. Uh, once you get past the top five, basically, we're not really using it. But there are a couple of repos using it, so we do have to consider it. Mm -hmm. um, so and, I mean, look at that. Fifty repos already using something else is yet again a part of the fragmentation problem. So, um, 
I suggested discourse, um, which I'll demonstrate shortly. Here's a few examples of people already using discourse, so discourse itself, obviously. Um, Fedora, Ubuntu, Mozilla, Pulp, Selfish, the foreman, which I used to work on. Um, there's like a billion others. <laughs> I think discourse themselves say they're running at least 30,000 sites, and that's just their own hosting, never mind self-hosted ones. So this is super popular. And I think it's for a good reason. I think it is the best forum software out there right now. Um, and so we're playing with it. So, OK, why does it help? This is the bit you want to hear. Um, first of all, async. This is important. We asked the question, how good are we at inclusion on Monday? And when you have real-time meetings, you are not including people in different time zones and people who are not comfortable in a real-time meeting, who are perhaps a quieter voice, or who want more time to think about the problem, or perhaps are a non-native speaker and can't keep up. Um, I definitely know someone who, by about 2 o'clock <laughs> on a given day, is just done with meetings because the language load is just the cognitive load is too much, right? So the ability to include more people is part of the wisdom of the crowd. It's the, more, the ability to get some information out of people. Um, I'm just, I, I want to try and include the room rather than just talk forever. Does this seem okay? Does this, this sound okay? If I go through each of these, does that make sense? Making async. Okay, yeah. Anyone used discourse before or forums in general? Yeah, we've all used them. Okay, who likes them? I did. I mean, I, I was worried that, you know, we would use something, I don't know, if it came to my mind, PHP, <laughs> <laughs> you know, And so, what do you take me for? <laughs> No, no. Well, I mean, to be clear, I, this is my suggestion. We still have to decide it as a community, right? But yeah, I think it's the best one out there. Yeah. Um, OK, so just for the video, um, pretty much the entire room for have you used a forum? And again, pretty much, I think, one or two people have put their hands down when they said, do you like forums? So I'm sorry for the people who don't like forums, but there are mitigations. <laughs> um, so, OK. And those people are really interested in knowing what you don't like about them. That's true. That's true, actually. Is anyone willing to share what they don't like about forums? Well, for me, at least, you actually have to go there. And compared to like email, it gets you your email. So you know what you read. You know, you know what you didn't read. So if the forum were to email you and you didn't have to use the web interface, that would be OK? Yeah, maybe. OK. Good to know. So OK, I'm on the other oh, side. Go on, Gondola. Yes, yes, OK. I don't know how well that came out, so I'll say it again. Um, I think it's important. To, so communities need three things, right? They need a place to store artifacts. They need a place to have discussions that are long-lived and that you can go back and check how things were decided. You've got the project archive, the history, the culture. And you need real-time chat in order to build cohesion between people and to possibly just hash things out really quickly, particularly where you're clearly missing each other in the longer form chat. Right? You need all three of those. And ideally, you need one of each of those things. Otherwise, you get the fragmentation again. So we're not saying to replace Matrix. We're not saying that we're going to get rid of any of that. I still want to keep like the meetings that we have because they're good for the community. I just want to make sure that the decision making stays async, which it mostly is these days, to be fair. We have improved that. Um, but we can do better. Right? One Perhaps you know the community ends up on Matrix the vast majority of the time, and so the forum presents an image of dead community. Right. Right. Like yes. Ghost town is a problem. I completely agree. Ghost town is a problem. There's ways to help with that. Firstly, um, I think forums are much more user centric. Is number one. So uh, a lot of support that we see perhaps in the Ansible user chat room today, which is a very busy room. Sometimes that's not the best place for that chat, right? I mean, yeah, if it's a quick question, how do I use this particular tool? Fine. But if you've got some massive playbook and you're going to go into like, all the problems with it, then doing something more long form is going to matter. You also see people not coming back to check on answers to their questions, right? So like, again, if you want a slightly more asynchronous, like, I'm going to ask this question, check back next week, or I'm going to get an email when my question is answered, that's going to be better for users, right? One sec, everybody. Um, whereas I also think um, discussion around architecture as well. Like, again, why did we decide something? That history is important, right? So you want that away from chat as well. Okay. Um, can those two be integrated together? I know there is like some kind of matrix discourse bridge, but I didn't look at it. Um, <laughs> one, one thing that I always find annoying with um, chat tools like Slack or Google Chat or whatever. At some point, you end up having a longer thread about a specific topic, which has like a huge amount of information, and it will be lost in, in the tool. 
Right. And if you could right. Find right. And right. Convert this to a form code. Right. So. so and have it as a reference. So awesome. you're absolutely right. So for the audio, um, Evgeny is asking whether we can make sure there's some integration between the two, so that when you have some long-running thread in a chat side, you can get that into a, into the the asynchronous side. In general, I think that's a, a question of discipline, you, as, and that's on us as the regulators to make sure that we, we make sure people are doing that. I mean, it's gonna, you're going to slip occasionally, but as long as you, as long as you realize within a couple of weeks before it's gone off the back of the history, then you can copy it, right? So that's 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 about setting good ground rules and setting good discipline. However, there are definitely um, integrations. Obviously, Discourse being fully open source has an API. Um, and there are definitely tools that fit into some of the other channels, uh, some of the other chat systems. One thing that is interesting that I haven't put in this document because it's not in no way guaranteed to occur, Discourse themselves are looking at matrix integration. So Discourse 3 has a chat box which you can put on your forum so people can actually live chat while they're using the forum, but it's completely isolated at the moment. However, I know they are looking at matrix integration on the back end. Depending on what that looks like, there could be some very fun stuff there as well. But that's specific to Discourse and does not solve the problem in, in general between asynchronous and synchronous communication, right? The, the problem I've seen is the, the foreman, which has like also RFC matrix on the one side of Discourse, and on the other side is people show up and chat, and say, I have a problem with X, Y, Z. And I say, OK, that's cool. And the, but the people who can answer you are in the US. Nobody asks it online yet. So they will not see your question. And if they turn up, they might or might not see it, depending on the time. And I'm asking them, can you open this in the forum? But they need to sign up for the forum. And this is like a huge step. <coughs> because they're signed in to one tool. So I think single sign-on is a huge, so the question here is like getting users to sign up can be a bit of a barrier to entry, particularly if they're already on chat and they've already feel like they've asked their question, that's fair. I think single sign-on can be a thing, this is why Fedora does what it does. I don't know if Ansible's ready for, or uh, whether we're going to jump to trying to do some kind of Fedora account style system. I wouldn't say no to that, it's just a lot of extra work that I don't know that we have time for this year. I'd love to fix that. David? At the, at the very least, perhaps, you know, like in the GitHub. Right, so login with GitHub is supported by Discourse. Yeah, exactly. Login with GitHub is already supported by Discourse. We'll definitely have that. If we go with Discourse, I want to stop mm -hmm. acting like it's a given because it's not. <laughs> um, but if we do, then yeah, that would be turned on for sure. There's other social login systems that it supports as well. If I can probably show you in a minute. Um, okay, so that's async stuff. Oh, Gondor? Yeah, just a few bits from the chat. So it's saying that the Discourse and threads. Um, yeah. Massive agreement about the language um, sync versus async, just mental mm. fatigue. Yeah. And yeah. Native English people on it. Just yeah, yeah, after a while, meetings just favor meetings just favor the loudest person in the room, and that's often me. So sorry, <laughs> but but they do, and I'd rather not dominate like that. I want I want better discussion. The, the, there's lots of people in the community have good ideas, right? Okay, so that's async stuff. Now, the second thing is basically a repeat of what I said about Matrix 18 months ago, which is that people don't use mailing lists anymore, and we need to recognize that. When the peak of the traffic in your project is in 2014, you have a problem. <laughs> And I don't think that's massively controversial. But to Mark's point, Discourse does support email. So you can sign up, use your GitHub login, whatever, set up your notifications, and never log in again. And that will absolutely work. In fact, under the hood, Discourse uses the same library that GitHub does. So all those emails with the ridiculously long reply to strings that you get from GitHub when you get a notification, it's exactly the same. And when you reply, it will go to the right place. You can also set an incoming email address so you could have this, you know, um, dev at discourse.ansible.org or whatever, um, and that would be a new topic created uh, effectively on the mailing list, right? So it works the same way. Um, there are some nice things in place for spam reduction. Uh, so you cannot email a new topic if you are not at least trust level one, but trust level one only takes like 15 minutes on the website. Here. Like you log in, you look at a few topics, <laughs> And, and then you're level one, you're done. It takes like 10 minutes. And then at that point, you can now create new topics. On that. And it's just spam reduction, right? It means we don't have to worry about moderator lists and things like that. Um, if you've ever interacted with the mailing list, then when we import the archives, which is supported, uh, then you will already be level one. <laughs> so you don't have to worry. You can continue to use, literally change your address book to be from Google Groups to wherever this new thing is, and you're done. You can carry on. That will be absolutely fine. But generally, I don't think this is massively controversial. Um, 
I'm not, you'll note here in my second paragraph, I'm not sure we'll ever get the users back that we've lost to Stack Overflow and Reddit and so on, but we can start afresh and start trying to attract new people and bring the communication back to a place where we're all together. All right, um, so that's, that's good. Um, discoverability, this one's huge and it's subtle. When I did the foreman um, in 2017, 2018, I noticed something really critical. Uh, we had just two mailing lists at the time. It's a much smaller project than Ansible, um, but still significant. And we had a users list and a dev list. And the users would never sign up for the dev list because they're not devs, right? It's, a, it's an imposter syndrome thing. They have perfectly valid opinions, but they're never going to sign up for the developers list. Within two weeks of the migration from mailing lists to discourse, we had users coming and offering respectfully, constructively, their opinions on things that were being discussed in the developer category because they can see it now. It's there. It's next to them. There's no barrier. In fact, Discord's got a reasonably good suggestion engine, so if you're, if you're interested in certain things, it's going to start suggesting other things that are similar, and you're going to pop up these discussions that then say, hey, this might be relevant to you. And so as we talk about how we move things like architecture discussions to a more public space and how we get the wisdom of the crowd involved in that, that's going to help. We're going to get users involved. And we've got to be a little careful. I'm aware of the scale. We don't want to fire hosts. We've got to manage it correctly. That's, that's again, that's a regulation problem. Um, but it, it, it can be very, very, very powerful. I've only got five minutes left. So I'm going to quickly go through this, and I'm going to get general comments. Um, Common functions, things that are, you know, we often describe ourselves as the community platform team <laughs> uh, because that's what we do, right? You know, if you think of a service or a platform to run your stuff on, our job is to build a platform for all of the Ansible community to build whatever it's interested in building, right? And so anything that's common to that, so discussion spaces, support spaces, the bullhorn, announcements, evangelism, meetups, whatever we need, that should be a common space right, that we can help to support. And so I can really see, actually to your point about um, how we get chats move from one to a place, I can see a space for a bot, right? The uh, Discourse has a really nice API. We could take Zodbot, so um, we could take Zodbot, have new meeting logs that then go straight to a post on Discourse. You could easily like tag a discussion to be posted to Discourse by the bot. Not ideal, because then the user <laughs> doesn't own their discussion, but po possibly better than nothing, right? <laughs> Well, um, I don't think it can because their user wouldn't exist, right? That's the problem. Your problem you were saying was that they don't have an account, yeah. so there's nothing to impersonate. But should they then log on later, an admin could reassign the post ownership, right? So, and that's possible. So yeah, a lot of that kind of thing where we can we can do integration. Uh, so one example would be around uh, community calendar, for example. It's very simple to build a community powered calendar in the same way that the bullhorn is community powered in chat today. You can have a community-powered calendar where anyone with appropriate authorization, which is basically to do with trust level, it's automatic, it's to do with your participation in the community, it's not gate-kept in any way. Um, if you're trust level, let's say, two, then you can go and create events on the event calendar, and so your meetup, your conference, your talk you're giving somewhere can be put onto the community calendar, and you don't need to, to worry about that. <coughs> so we talked a bit about discussions. Um, so I've done that. Vendor lock-in is an important point. We don't own our archives. Uh, Google Groups is this close. It's a wafer-thin slice away from being vendor lock-in. The only reason I have 75,000 emails from Ansible Project on this laptop is because we know someone at Google. <laughs> like, I opened a public bug, and they just ignored it. The Google Groups takeout was completely broken. Um, and so it's, it's that close to us. Not, but Google Groups has been nearly dead multiple times, and I'm afraid that we are going to lose it at some point. And that would be not a good thing. Likewise, our Zodbot logs are on fedoraproject.org. We don't own that either. And we know the folks at Fedora, I trust them, but it's not ours. We could lose it. <laughs> so that's not good. And then just finally, decentralizing things. I said in my talk on Monday, I want to see as much decentralization, as little gatekeeping as possible. The, the, uh, the, the features of something like this are quite possible. So groups are quite useful for being able to at uh, something um, uh, without burning out individual people. Uh, the ability to fine-grained notifications, so you could have a group that subscribed to, say, a particular category and a particular tag, and then they only get the things that are relevant to them without burning out on the fire hose of other stuff. Right? So that's, that's quite powerful. Um, you can also decentralize power uh, via private groups. So Afghanis had an experience of this. Um, if you do something like creating uh, an infrastructure group and then use that to register accounts on your hosting providers or your social media providers or whatever, then whoever's in that group can do a password reset, right? <laughs> That's what you found out with Mastodon. Uh, anyone who's in the group can then do a passive reset and see that email coming into the private group's inbox with no need to involve anybody else. Right? And I've got like two minutes left or one minute left, so I'm going to stop there. Uh, there's also a, a bunch about accessibility because web interfaces can obviously be made accessible. 
Um, I mean, yes, it's a bit, e email is naturally screen reader friendly, of course, because it's plain text, but I think you can do more with, with this as well. Um, obviously, it's open source, so we can do lots of fun plugins, and then there's a whole bit here on possible transition plans and other things as well. So I'm going to stop there. I only have a, a minute or two left. Does anyone have any thoughts or questions? And if not, I will be around all day to chat about this in private. So the sign people have worked with in the discussion Right. Yeah, I'll do that in a sec. Anything else before I wrap it up? OK, so here's what happens next. I go and write this up, both one for the, the plan as a whole, probably a specific one, which is a written a blog post version of this sets of notes. That goes up on probably my blog, because we don't have a community blog. <laughs> and then I will put that into community topics. And we can start having a much wider debate over this. And that probably then needs to go to the mailing list, to Reddit, to, um, well, to GitHub, and, and to chat, and so on. So that the right groups of people can see it and, and participate. OK. Who's up next, Hal? Um, Walter's next, OK. Thank you very much, everybody. I'm excited. Yeah.